Today, we're diving into a comprehensive discussion about crime reporting and its impact on public perception and policy. From sensationalism and bias to the misuse of language and imagery, the stories that make it into the news often do more than just inform. They shape our understanding of crime and safety, sometimes with serious consequences. Let's explore how crime reporting has evolved, where it continues to fall short, and what can be done to ensure that journalism contributes positively to our society. To start, it's important to recognize that sensationalism in crime reporting is nothing new. For over a century, the media has followed a familiar pattern, focusing on lurid details, using hyperbolic language, and choosing stories that evoke fear. This approach has persisted even after high-profile journalistic failures like the Central Park Five case and the debunked super predator myth. Despite these lessons, sensationalism remains a common feature of contemporary crime coverage. Why does this matter? Sensational reporting creates the false impression that crime is always on the rise, which fuels public fear and drives punitive policies that are often ineffective at improving public safety. Let's look at a few examples to see how this plays out. Take the case of Willie Horton in 1988. The Lawrence Eagle Tribune won a Pulitzer Prize for its coverage, which included nearly 200 stories about Horton and the Massachusetts furlough program. Despite the fact that over 99% of individuals released through the program returned to prison without incident, this single case was sensationalized and became a focal point of the 1988 presidential campaign. The result? A significant rollback of furlough opportunities and the adoption of harsher sentencing laws, driven by fear rather than evidence. These policies have since been shown to have a terrible track record in improving public safety. Now fast forward to June 2021. A local ABC News reporter shared a video of a man filling a garbage bag with products at a Bay Area Walgreens and riding away. Over the next four weeks, the media published more than 300 stories about this single shoplifting incident. Despite property crime remaining at similar levels to pre-pandemic times, the coverage spurred a call from California's governor for hundreds of millions of dollars in additional spending to prosecute retail theft. Again, sensationalism drove a policy response that ignored broader context and evidence showing that increased penalties do not deter retail theft. The images used in crime stories follow a similar pattern. Mugshots are a staple of crime reporting. Even when charges are dropped, these mugshots can remain online, making it difficult for people to find jobs or housing long after their legal issues have been resolved. Beyond the stories, language, and images, the media's focus on certain types of crimes particularly those tracked by police departments, also distorts public understanding of safety. Index crimes like murder, robbery, and motor vehicle theft dominate crime reporting, while other significant issues such as wage theft, housing discrimination, and environmental crimes receive far less attention. This imbalance leaves the public with a skewed understanding of what truly threatens their safety and well-being. Moreover, crime data is often presented in a way that amplifies fear. News stories frequently highlight the most alarming statistics, such as a spike in a specific crime, while ignoring broader trends that may paint a less dramatic picture. This selective reporting can create the illusion of a crime wave where none exists, further fueling public fear and reactionary policies. So where do we go from here? How can newsrooms and journalists improve their crime reporting to better serve the public good? First, it's essential to reconsider the stories that are told. Newsrooms should audit the proportion of stories that portray people of color as perpetrators of crime, and make an effort to provide a more balanced and accurate portrayal. Additionally, journalists should reduce the number of anecdotal stories about index crimes and focus more on broader trends and systemic issues that provide context and a fuller picture of public safety. Second, journalists should be more critical of the language they use. Avoiding labels like felon in favor of more neutral descriptors can help reduce stigma and support a more informed public dialogue about criminal justice reform. Crime reporting holds immense power to shape public perception and influence policy. By moving away from sensationalism, challenging harmful stereotypes, and focusing on accuracy and context, journalists can help create a more just and equitable society. It's about more than just telling stories. It's about telling the whole story.